when the knee hurts, maybe swells, men and women are naturally very cautious at first. We rely on running, so to speak, constantly standing on it, and of course we are concerned that something could break or something is already damaged. The most common mistake is to make the pain unfelt, to avoid it, or, if that is not possible, to suppress it with painkillers under an injection. This is indeed a completely human reaction, but it almost always exacerbates the problem, because even if you temporarily don't feel the pain, the cause is usually not eliminated. I will explain that to you now and not only show you the three most important pelvic floor exercises, but also how you can make these exercises even more effective. In our experience, exactly three muscles are primarily responsible for the onset of pain in the knee and also for osteoarthritis and everything else that can play a role there. And that is the large thigh muscle, which practically pulls over here across the kneecap, is attached here and extends the knee. The second one is the one on the back, it goes down here from the sit bone. And the third one is the large twin calf muscle, which goes up from the heel bone over the joint and ends here in the epicondyles. And if these three muscles are too tense, the knee joint is compressed too strongly, then it leads to meniscus, tears, ruptures, detachment, to arthrosis and all these things that we do not want, and of course to pain. And that's why I'm placing the three exercises we're doing today right there. Now feel your knee joint again, the affected one, right or left or both, whatever. It's best if you run a little, and if you don't have the pain right now, try to perceive the tension, because the pain is what tells you, the tensions are what tells you, and later you can compare whether your knee feels better. For the first exercise, lie on your stomach and reach back to your foot preferably going for your forefoot, and then pull your forefoot further towards your buttocks. If you can't reach because your arms are too short, or the stretching is too poor from the thigh, then you have to turn a little, bend your leg, now you can usually reach, then hold the grip and roll around until you are in the exercise. And now we start by stretching. It is important that you press down with the bar on the floor, press with the bar against the floor, and when you have pressed with the bar against the floor, when the contact is there, then you pull the foot further towards the buttocks. Until you notice, oh, there in the front where it pulls in the thigh, that is already quite clear. If I do a little more, it would switch to negative, that must not be, it must still be positively occupied. Positive feel-good pain at the upper limit, one could say. And now you breathe in deeply, and we wait until the stretching is, so to speak, absorbed by the tissue, which gives a little, and continue to pull towards the buttocks, so that the intensity is high and remains as constant as possible. Because if, if you don't feel much while you do it, because it has already given in, and you leave it like that, then the exercise won't be so effective. So always go a little further into the stretch. And then you press with the groin against the floor and want to stretch your leg. Relax, pull back again. And again you want to stretch your leg, Hold it tight, let go, and pull it closer. And again, you want to stretch it, let it loose, pull it closer, and slowly pull it out again. And that was the first exercise here, you noticed it, for this large thigh muscle. And now we're talking about the back of the leg, which is affected, I hadn't mentioned before. You naturally exercise on the right when your right knee is having difficulties, and on the left when your left is having difficulties. And if it's both, then you just rewind, start again from the beginning, and then do the opposite for the other side, so to speak. Now please stretch your right leg and gently pull your foot a little towards you. And the left leg, you leave it conveniently positioned, 
always at the angle that allows you to pull yourself forward with your body as straight as possible. So this movement here, and when you realize, oh, you can take it up to this point, then you go on a bit further. And now we stretch ourselves first, fully extend the knee. That is important, fully extended. And we stretch more and more. We breathe and keep moving forward. You notice the stretching in the back of the knee, especially maybe in the back leg. And as you notice, you keep moving forward, you slide your left heel forward. Breathe beautifully. And now we do the strength training. That means you press with your heel into the ground and at the same time with the back of your knee against the ground. As if you wanted to bend your leg. And if you can target it, then pull back with the torso but keep the torso tight. If that is still too difficult to control, don't worry. Just continue further into the stretch. Move your foot a little further forward, relax, stretch further in. And again, your heel wants to bend, your knee pit continues to press into the ground really tight. The tighter you do it, the better the effect. Relax and go a little further in. And again, heel presses down, back of the knee presses down, body pulls, if possible, backwards. Loosen up and go a little further in. And slowly out again. That was now especially here for the posterior side of the thigh. And for the third exercise, we go to the wall. And if you're already running, standing up, feel yourself. And if you notice that something has already changed, then write a comment. Or give a thumbs up of enthusiasm, because this little exercise is already maybe easier, which is quite possible. Read above all, or write above all, so that others can read it and are motivated by it. Now it's about the calf. Please place both palms against the wall, move the foot of the leg where the knee has a problem backwards. And that's backwards, so that when the knee is fully extended, you can trigger the stretching in the right calf here in the front left when you bend the knee. It usually pulls just below the knee joint. Stretch yourself in there nicely and breathe. And let the muscles and fascia have time to relax again. Please make sure that the foot is pointing forward and not outward. This is a common mistake in this exercise. And as you notice, it feels good. You slide further with your left foot and then come a little further into the stretch. And now start and flex your right forefoot against the ground as if you wanted to go on tiptoe. but definitely keep the right knee completely straight. Let go and go further inside. And again, you press again with your right foot against the ground. Keep the knee fully extended, relax. Make sure again that the knee is extended and continue into the stretch. And we do that again, okay? You press again with the forefoot against the ground. The wall holds, so to speak, so that you cannot lift off with the heel. It must stay on the ground, relax and go further into the stretch, then slowly come out again. Now feel it. After the three exercises, how does it feel in comparison? Ask yourself, where is the pain? Do you still feel it at all? Or if you felt the tension earlier, 
has the tension been reduced? The more you develop this body awareness to listen to it purely, the better you'll feel because you simply know how your body reacts. And now we want to make the exercises more efficient. That means you now need either a knee brace or a few books approximately of this height and our exercise loop or a belt or a correspondingly knotted towel or rope or something that extends the arm. You will understand soon why. Now lie on your stomach and put your knee on the elevation and press down on the groin. Then you will notice that something is already pulling in the pelvis, which may not have been felt before because the knee was not raised. This is the first. The second, put your foot in the loop once through, once around, or take your belt or whatever you're using now and lie back on it with the knee elevated. The bar must be on the ground and the loop is still loose and now you press the bar onto the ground and pull your foot towards you and notice, oh my goodness, what kind of intensity is this? I didn't notice it earlier. And that's exactly what I mean. You can make the whole thing much more efficient with this increase of the knee. And because you have even less access, most people have to extend their arm. That's why there is the loop. And now you keep going further in. We'll do it roughly in the beginning so you can understand and maybe already notice how intense it is and how much it helps. And then you want to stretch your leg, you resist, hold tight, let go, continue, and you would do that now just the same until the two and a half minutes are up, like in the previous exercise. And now to the back of the leg, we will also intensify that. We now need the smaller wedge of the knee retainer or a thinner book, quite simply. What is it about? Look. When I extend my knee here, do you notice how my heel lifts up? That is usually the case with people, that it is slightly hyperextended. And now I have the option, either my popliteal fossa is on the ground and my heel is raised, or my heel touches the ground, then the knee is not fully extended. And that is not optimal, as we do not have the full intensity of the effect. Therefore, I now place my heel bone so far on the wedge, which can be adjusted to the millimeter, that at the same time, when the back of the knee touches the ground, the heel also touches the knee support. And then we have optimal exercise conditions. And then I go into the stretch with the hoop, or with the belt, whatever, or with a towel that you have rolled. However, press the back of the knee against the floor. The heel is raised, and now pull the foot back. And then you will immediately notice, oops, that is also more intense, precisely because we did it for support. The exercise would run the same way again. You first pull back further, and then you tense up. The foot wants to go forward. The torso wants to go back. That's not possible at all without these aids, because if you don't have a loop, you can't tense up against it. There is also an additional loss of effect. What you are feeling now, this intensity, it is caused by that. And now it's about the calf again, about the strong pull from bottom to top to reduce it. We had done that earlier, you remember and had to go quite far back with the foot, depending on the state of stretching. Now you simply take a few books so that the foot is elevated. My knee brace is also adjusted so that we hit the train in the calf when the weight from above pushes directly down. Then this is the most direct implementation of force. And exactly in that position, we add the wall as support because it can now press us nicely from below. And you notice this exercise is also more intense. That's why we do it, because the weight now fully ensures that in addition to the wall force, the stretching is triggered. We would now do the same first weight, then try to go on the tiptoe, prevent it by putting full weight on it, Additionally, use the hand so far that it does not lift the heel.
And then you come out again and feel inside and notice, hey, a whole lot lighter now. And a note in our own interest, the knee stretcher and also the loop are part of our tools that we have developed to make practicing easier for you so that you can practice more efficiently, so that you save time. If you are interested in information, please click here or under the video on the corresponding image of the exercise loop or knee rest and then you will receive everything. And the knee is so important, knee health is so important, the older we get, the more important running is. And you know how many people eventually can't walk or can't walk well anymore and sit more and more. That's why it's absolutely important to spread the word that you can keep the knee fully functional in most cases when we do exercises like these. Therefore, do the exercise with the people you know. If you manage to do it reasonably well, you can already explain to the other person how to do it in the same way so that he feels what he can do for himself. Help spreading the word so people realize they can do something about most pains. If you click up here, you will come to a knee routine. Even more for the knee, for well-being. Down here you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe and also activate the bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you click directly here below, you will go directly to the knee brace and to the loop. Goodbye, until next time, it was nice that you were there.